Okay, I wanted to run my first test um, using this machine. Um, it's, it's, you can do a lot with it, and I, I had something in mind when I purchased it, and I want to do that. So let me, uh, let me show you what I, what I want to look at today. I want to look at three terminal regulators. Um, input, output, uh, capacitor in, capacitor out. Um, I have a whole bunch of 7808, so if I blow them up, I don't care. Um, so we'll just use that, 7808. So something like 10 volts in, 8 volts out. Usually you have maybe a 2 volt um, dropout on these things. You want, you want about a 2 volt headroom on, on the input, the output, but we'll test that today. So uh, let's go ahead and put this into uh, power supply mode. And then let me show you what I'm doing here. I've got a, a three terminal regulator on heat sink, and it's exactly what I showed you in the schematic there. So let's take a look at this. Um, the yellow trace will be the uh, input, and the cyan trace will be the output. And uh, I can change the that. And you can see that we need to get up to a certain amount of input before we start to regulate. And there we're starting to regulate. So we're, we're inputting more voltage and we're getting less voltage output. So it's regulating. And this is two volts per division. So two, four, six, eight. And we're putting in right here, we would be putting in uh, 10 volts input. This is 10 volts and this would be 12 volts input. But our output is always uh, uh, 10 volts. Now, if our power supply droops, then the output will droop as well, and there'll always be about oh, about a volt difference between the input and the output. But for it to regulate, you need to be you need to be up here somewhere. Okay, so I think everybody understands that. What I want to demonstrate today is what if we have a ripple? Uh, does the three terminal regulator get rid of the ripple entirely, or is it a little bit left behind? So imagine that yellow trace has a ripple on it. Well. Uh, we can do that over here, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into uh, amplifier mode, okay? And I'm going to be using this function generator down here. And I am going to be inputting the yellow trace. And so what it is is a ramp with an offset. And so it's mimicking ripple, okay? And so the ripple never goes below 10 volts. And so the eight volt regulator is regulating just fine. The ripple goes up to what, 18, let's see here. What is that? 10, 12, 14, 16. So the ripple is going between uh, 10 volts and 16 volts. It's, uh, it's, it's uh, whacking up and down. And, but the output is very, very stable. So you can see here that it does a very good job of uh, regulating, okay? If we start, uh, let's see here, if we start to droop, oops, here we go. If we start to droop, you can see that the regulator is going to follow that, that uh, ripple. And the part that's above 10 volts is working fine. The part that's below is not gonna work so good, right? And so we can raise this up. You can see we can kind of get kind of get close here and see that a little bit of that ripple will sneak through. So um, we need to make sure that the very very bottom of our ripple is at least 10 volts for this to, to for this to work correctly. Okay. Now this is an unloaded condition. Okay. So let me show you what I'm going to do. Okay. I am going to add a load. I am going to add a 50 ohm load. Okay. So 8 volts, 50 ohms. Uh, we could do the calculation, but it's you know. Perfectly fine, and um, like 160 milliamps, something like that. I don't know. Um, so anyway, we're going to do that here with this uh, 50 ohm resistor, and uh, we will go up to the top here, and we will take a look. And let me rearrange things a bit. It's kind of hard for me to move in. Okay, so I'm going to add that 50 ohms, and an oscillation occurs. It's something I hadn't anticipated. Get some kind of oscillation, and um, the oscillation is both on the input and the output. So whatever the device is doing, it's um, creating some frequency of noise on the input and the output. It's it's like a, a oscillating internal to the part. Um, so I've been playing around on. Uh, 
what would cause that, okay? And you'd say, oh, well, maybe it's, it's, it's making the uh, fancy HP power supply amplifier oscillate whatever load this is that makes it oscillate. And that's not the case. I can put a big, big capacitor here. I can make sure there's nothing kind of be oscillating here, but um, this thing is oscillating and just injecting it into the input and the output. It, you just see it, okay? And so I could not fix any, fix it by putting any value capacitor over here, but I can fix it by changing this capacitor, okay? Currently it's a 0 0.01 microfarads, okay? So um, this is what happens when you have a 0 0.01. Let me put in a one microfarad capacitor. Let me put in the capacitor here. I'm going to hold it all in place. And now I'm going to, uh, oops. It's really hard for me to do this without soldering it all in place. But you can see that we've almost gotten all rid of it. It's still oscillating a little bit. A tiny little bit there, it's still oscillating. Now, the input looks clean now, but the output is the output is oscillating. Let's try a uh, 0.1 microfarad. That was one microfarad. Let's try a 0.1 microfarad and uh, see what happens. Gosh, this is all hard to do. I'm trying to hold three things together. And you can see there, it's a little bit worse, okay? And then without with a 0, 0.0, that's 0 0.01. This is 0.1. And let me grab the other one. This is, whoa, let's see here. This is, oh, there we, oops. This is one, one, one microfarad and it's almost gone. It's almost gone. So let me put the one microfarad on the input so you can see that it doesn't do anything. Here, it's, oops. Yeah, make it, makes it worse. Putting the one microfarad on the input makes it worse. Um, and then putting the one microfarad on the output makes it quieter. So anyway, pretty interesting stuff. So uh, we went from uh, 0 0.01 to 0.1 to 1.0 microfarads. And you can see it does change things on the output. So um, I'm a little bit surprised by the result, actually. Um, I expected it to do better. Now this is a, a, a very sharp um, ripple. It's not kind of a roundy ripple. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and put a sine wave ripple in. Uh, let's see here. There we go. A sine wave ripple. Uh, let's see if that does about the same, that does about the same thing. So this is 0 0.01. It still oscillates. Uh, let's put in the 0.1. Uh, there's that. I'll put in the point one. And oh, look at that. It went all the way. Oops. I'm having a hard time holding the uh, capacitor on with my fingers here. And I'm grounding it. Shoot. Just a second. Just a second. I'm accidentally grounding it to the uh, like copper uh, heat sink, which is grounded. Yeah, look at that. The point one cleans it up right away. So there you go. Um, yep. Um, so I think moral of story is have enough capacitance on the output of your three terminal regulators. Um, check the output with an oscilloscope when they're loaded. Most people just put a voltmeter on it say hey it's good looking good you wouldn't see that high frequency ripple um just looking with a voltmeter so um yeah that's interesting anyway cool little experiment for the day uh, using this new machine i have um, to input different signals into here now um, i might go a step further um, i'm thinking about using this machine here. So this is my Rigel MSO and it's not just an oscilloscope. It has an arbitrary waveform generator and it has an arbitrary waveform recorder. I could record real world ripple <laughs> and then replay it. 
and then we could run that into the amplifier or I could actually uh, program um, a file. So the arbitrary waveform generator allows you to create files um, and output those. And so I could create a, you know, a synthesized ripple uh, and have it at different levels and at different frequencies and stuff. Um, one of the things we could do, we could change the, uh, we could change the frequency of the ripple. Um, let's see here. So I've just changed the frequency of the ripple to 120 hertz now. Was it 60 hertz? Here's 120 hertz. And you can see we still get ripple. And if I use my 0.1, 0.1 microfarad capacitor, it is, yeah, getting rid of it basically. It has to be soldered down, but yeah, that's looking good. Anyway, let me know if you've had experience with the three terminal regulators oscillating on you. Um, I haven't seen it before.